Welcome back, sewists. Today we're going to sew up some of my stash and use one of my vintage patterns. So today's project is Quick Sew 534. This is a vintage pattern. I'm looking for the date on it and not seeing it, but it's very um, late 60s, early 70s just by looking at the fashion. I was going to make this for mom, but I actually went ahead and sized it up and I'm going to make it for me. I only sized up to an 18 and this is fairly fitted. So we'll see if I, according to the measurements, it should work, we'll see. I did lengthen the torso. Um, it has a band. I'm going to be doing view C up here in the corner but I'm going to do the contrast ribbing on it. And if, if I decide to, I can always go and trim the edge of the sleeve if I feel like it needs it with a little more ribbing. So you'll need some ribbing and you'll need some stretch knit. I'm using this lovely plaid. Again, it looks 70s to me. This looks very uh, period. <laughs> and then I, I have a whole tub full of, or a small tub, full of ribbings. So I pulled out a ribbing that looks good with it that we will use just for the neck piece. I've sized everything up and I've lengthened the torso. The torso on this is quite short. When I measured it, um, even sized up, it was way up around my ribs. So I've added four inches to the bodice just to get it close to my natural waist. And then I've, uh, and then the band, the way they show it, if you look, it should the waistline sh seam should be on the waist and then it has a band that fits the hip. So if I did it the way they showed it, it would have been a crop top with a band, <laughs> which actually would be period also and be quite cute, but not what I'm going for today. So all of those things have been done. There's not a lot to show as far as alterations, so we're gonna get cutting. Because I'm working with plaid, I am going to be trying to just get a general uh, lineup of my um, pattern around the body. I'm not gonna worry too much about it in the sleeve. And the same with the uh, band in the front. I'm gonna try and get the front of the band to line up with the pattern of the front of the bodice. I know it's not gonna match perfectly as we go around, but I'll do my best to get it kinda of close. The back's probably not gonna line up. The only other option would be to cut the band on the bias. And if I have enough, I will, but I don't think I do. I think um, I have like one yard of the fabric, which I know I can get it out of, especially since I'm doing the neck band in a contrast. This does not take a lot of fabric, and it's partly because it is so fitted and not very long. So I'm just gonna start lining everything up and trying to get my pattern right, cut out, and we'll be sewing. This should be a pretty fast little sew, quarter inch seam allowances, meant to be sewn at the serger if you have one. If not, this whole thing can be done on the sewing machine with a zigzag. Just matching up my side seams. This is my front and I flipped it over. You can see where they're gonna line up and there's only quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just trying to make sure I get it pretty close and I am. So I'm ready to cut out my back. All right, so there's my ribbing for my um, neckline front and I've got my front on here. I need to refold for my back and then I've got to get a sleeve and the bottom band. This is the bottom band. So I can easily get that in there. My back and here's my sleeve. And I think I can get the sleeve and the bottom thing down here. We will see. Oh yeah, there's enough. Just enough, okay. All right, I'm just gonna finish cutting out and I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. So here's my sleeve. I have this little piece here that I'm just pulling out of the way that's this part folded in half and I may refold this. This is the side that was beside my bodice pieces and I folded it down and I can get my band. I'm gonna to have to put a seam on each side instead of just one seam, but such is life. So my band will be more or less bias. I'm gonna refold this to get my sleeve out of it. Um, and then I will have like a chunk about this big left of this fabric. Worked out pretty well. Got all of my, um, got good use of the one yard of fabric. Okay, I'm cut out. We'll see if I regret my decision to skew the band and the sleeve. I may not. It's meant for ribbing also. You could, you could use ribbing for 
the band. You could also make the, the gathered sleeve that has a band on it, that, which actually view A is my favorite view. I just didn't think it was be, would be as flattering on me to have a sep, the band in a different fabrication. It may be fine. I don't know. I was a certain concerned about it. So I do think I might come back and make that collar style though. It's all ribbing, but it's wide and it kind of folds over. It looks so cute. So now that we're cut out, we are ready to start on view C. Let me show you real quick a little close up of what the uh, directions look like. So here's our directions for view B and C. Just you can kind of see they're all hand drawn. I just love a vintage pattern like this. And there's a nice, I think the graphics are great. And here's the information on um, different seam finishes that you can do. If you want to just pause your video here, if you want to read over this a little more closely and get some more information, but there you are. It explains how everything's interchangeable, so you can use VA, or view A's color on view C or in view um, A's sleeve on view B, and it explains how everything's very interchangeable because of the way it fits. Just pause if you want to look over the directions better or if you're sewing along. I actually expect this to be a pretty fast sew because there's really no finishing. Like you don't have to do a lot of hemming, etc. Um, the only hemming on this is the sleeve. And if you choose the version that has the ribbing for the sleeve, you don't have to hem that because it's, you know, the ribbing handles it. First thing we're going to do is sew this together at the shoulder seams. I will be serging quarter inch seam allowances throughout for this, other than the sleeve hem for the view that I chose. So we're going to match up best we can up here at the shoulder seams. Be really cautious. You can see how that is open in the front. Oh, I hope I don't hate this plaid. Okay, we're gonna pin together our shoulder seams and sew them together. We wanna treat it kind of carefully because of that big cutout. We don't want that to pull or to get any runs down in the bottom of that neckline. And the, because of how I cut this out, everything's gonna match up pretty stinking close. Shoulder seams and everything. So I'm pinned together the shoulders. It's gonna look like that. And I'm just gonna serge right across, do one shoulder and go to the other. Because this has quarter inch seam allowance, I am surging, not surging off any seam allowance. Just putting it next to the knife and sewing. All right, I have two shoulder seams. And just so you can kind of see, it lines up pretty close, even on the shoulder seam. So that's my shoulders, and now we're ready to take our neckband. And this was cut on the fold. It says so center back seam, but it was cut on the fold. So there is no center back seam. Not sure why, because you can see when looking at the directions in the front that it is not supposed to be sewn together. They overlap. So we're gonna just fold this in half. Better put my glasses on to make sure I'm getting the right side, correct side out. So I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna press it. And then we will um, pin it on. We're gonna find the center back. All right, we're just matching our little raw edges here and pressing to keep it folded in half nicely. And then we will mark our center back, which is just mark the very half of this, and we'll be ready to put it in. Here's my folded in half ribbing. I'm going to mark the center back right here, and that we are going to line up with the center back of our neckline, which I managed to wad up. Here we go. Right sides together. So let's find our center back here. Now when sewing, Whenever possible, for the most part, this, there's always, you can break every rule, as I'm sure you've learned if you've sewn for very long at all. But when sewing, normally the seam allowances are pressed towards the back. So these shoulder seams will be, will be pressed towards the back, the side seams will be pressed towards the back. So when you're putting this together and you've got this little seam up here and you're trying to figure out what to do with it, push it to the back side of the garment. So I'm gonna line up my center back to my center back on my ribbing and my shirt here and pin that first. 
And then this is going to wrap around the whole thing to the front. And we're going to just line it up with the front of this neckline. We have to have a little seam allowance down there. So once we've got those lined up, then we can start pinning in between. Boy, I was hoping it would have a little, be a little tighter than this. I never think the neckline bands are tight enough. I always want them a little, a little bit smaller so that they pull nicer and you don't get the floppy, um, floppy neck band. <coughs> and because we have a doubled ribbing, it's a little heavier than our outer shirt. So here's our little neck band piece pinned in right sides together so you can see what's you want to have it hanging below you don't want to line up perfectly with this because we have to have enough when we flip this over we're going to be flipping this around and stitching across there we're also going to be making a little clip which i'll show you in a minute now you could if you wanted to come in and actually do a little straight stitch in this corner to reinforce it especially if you're using a very loose um, weight knit that you feel like might fall apart then I would do a little corner straight stitch right here to reinforce before um, you do the clip. But we're going to start right here. We're going to serge all the way around, or you can zigzag all the way around. Here's our directions. So this is what it looks like, and you can see it has little dots on the pattern. I did not transfer those to mine, so you don't see it on mine. I apologize for that. I should have, and I didn't. And then here's the little clip. I'll show you a close-up of the clip in just a minute. Be very careful not to pull or to uh, let this stretch out your little neck opening down here. All right, I am lined up at the serger so you can see this is the bottom. Can you see that's the little bottom part of the neckline? It is this part right here. So I've just put everything inside right up to that. It's up against the knife because I only have a quarter inch and I'm just gonna serge carefully around and I will stop when I get to the other side and we'll have a little bit of seam allowance left over to do the next step. Make sure you pull your pins out as you sew. We do not want to hit a pin with that knife. So here I am, oops, here I am coming around the other end. You don't want to cut into this. So what we're going to do is get right up to that knife. And then I'm going to just pull this this way so it doesn't get caught. And I'm going to sew up to it. And now I'm going to pull the whole thing out of the way. And sew off. And I hopefully, yep, I got right on it. So we have a sewn in little collar band looks like this. We're going to come in and make two tiny little clips down here in these corners. All right, so we're going to come in and do a tiny little clip down here. And you probably could even get away with not doing it, but you're going to make a little clip. There's a little dot. So we're just going to do a tiny clip. Can you see that? In each corner. And then we're going to flip this around and, and finish off the bottom of this. So once you've clipped it, these flip around. The clip helps it so that you can overlap without a problem. Make your clip like a quarter inch or less. Then these fold over and lay on top of each other. And then I'm gonna serge across the bottom. I do. I did mine backwards. They are overlap, like right over left or left over right. It's a very cute and clever little way to do a neckband. And you should have some extra, I have extra seam allowance. All right, it's pinned together. Here's my little clips. Not very neat, but that's how it looks. Now I have a little excess on mine. Yours may come out exactly to the three, to the quarter inch. I think I cut my band, I cut out the band that was for the self fabric and then I ended up choosing to do the ribbing. So I think I could have, I think the ribbing band is actually a little smaller and I think that's why I have a little extra on here. So just so you know, yours may look slightly different. I'm just going to serge right across the bottom of this and then that will be finished off and we'll be ready to start sleeve. So I'm going to take this over here. So 
So if you look, I just searched across. Because I searched with the blue up instead of the white, you can see I got these little corners that I didn't quite catch. Those will be holes. So I'm gonna come back and surge across one more time. Make sure I catch all of that. You could just use your zigzag and go across there too. It would work just fine. All right, everything is now caught. You can see that's what it's gonna look like. Let's flip it, flip it around and see how the little neckline looks. Oh yeah, that's cute. Cute and simple. Looky there. Okay, that's all done. We're ready for sleeve. Now we're gonna take our little sleeves and sleeves very straightforward because this is the flat method of a sleeve. So you're, there, it's marked front and back and it has a little shoulder mark. Let me clip mine real quick. Here's my shoulder. And here's my back. If you do the clips, make sure you do less than a quarter of an inch because we don't want to have a little hole since we have such narrow seam allowance. I opened a new box of pattern paper and this time I ordered crepey paper and it's actually quite a bit heavier. Works great though. There's my sleeve. You can see how this, I like the little biasy sleeve personally. I think that's gonna be pretty cute. Okay, I may not regret it at all. We're going to start by matching shoulder seam to the shoulder clip and then back to back and front to front. Make sure I get them, this one's back. Make sure I get them on there correctly. And we are just gonna sew straight across because this is a flat sleeve and not a set in sleeve, which I think is great. So if we were following along, we have, we're all the way up to step six. I kind of did fast and easy cheater grading up, which I'm not gonna show in this video because that's a whole video of its own. So I hope um, because I didn't do I didn't do the long method, I did the cheater short method. I hope it still fits okay. I'm a little concerned um, that's gonna be a little snug and it is it is a fitted, it's a fairly snug pattern. <laughs> it, you can tell because of the 60s and 70s, everything was fairly fitted. It wasn't loose, it wasn't very loose, unless you went for the full trapeze. You know, they did have those trapeze styles that were quite full. Now this sleeve should fit in quite nicely very little ease if you're doing the sleeve that has the gathers you need to do a gather um, line I do a little basting line across the cap first pull in those little gathering lines and then pin in I think the only thing I not, might not like about it is really just the plaid I like plaid a lot I just think I might not find it flattering on my figure we'll find out we shall see now if you um, do this right. The, sleeve, the back sleeve has a little more room, so it should give you a little get, have a little extra ease in the back and not much in the front. That's pretty typical for a sleeve because that's how our bodies are built. So here is one sleeve pinned in and ready to be sewn. I'm going to go ahead and pin both in at this and then sew them both at the same time. Now you could go ahead if you're using your serger. You could go ahead and um, serge across that hem if you want to, if you're doing the sleeve that has the regular hem, or you could wait and do the serging after you do the whole side seam thing that's coming up here in just a minute. I often will do it um, after the fact because I like to catch the side seam in that hemming seam. It just makes sort of a nice flat, pretty stitch. By choosing to do bias or skewing my um, sleeve and my lower band what happens is I don't have to worry about matching up the plaids now you can technically sometimes you can have a bias and still match it up uh, but you need a lot more fabric than I have I'm getting this whole thing I'm cut, cutting a size 18 and getting it I got it all out of one yard of fabric now this is not gonna be tunic length or anything this is not very long It'll just barely fit down on the hip a little bit. I'm seeing this and really wanting like the summer sweater knit. I would love that. I think that would be so cute in this with a striped ribbing, like a little red, white, and blue or something. Oh, that'd be so cute. Or yellow and white and blue. I, I really like this pattern a lot as far as the style goes. Time to sew it in. I'm going to serge. You can do it at the sewing machine with your little zigzag or your overlock stitch or whatever you choose to use. And then we will be right back to, this is gonna be 
you done so quick. What a fast, fun pattern. If you have lots of problems with your sleeves easing in, that's just sort of like one of the areas you struggle with. Put the sleeve face down and let the feed dogs do the work. Because when the sleeve is face up, um, the foot of the machine will stretch whatever the top layer is a little bit and the feed dogs will ease in whatever's next to them. Now remember, when we're working with knits, you do not need to stretch it when sewing. It, just let the machine do all of that. You don't have to pull or stretch at all. Here is a little biasy sleeve. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that almost perfectly matches up in the front. I wish I'd paid a little more attention. Look at that. Almost exactly matched up. I was not paying attention when lining up, but they both almost match up. On accident, that almost happened. Okay. Very, very cute. We are now going to do side seams. I'm going to flip this around. We're going to line up our little underarm seam and we're going to just pin at that seam. We're going to start at the top of the sleeve and go all the way down the whole side seam from underarm down. Easy, easy. Again, surging. Again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just loving how easy that all is. So because of how I cut this out, my side seams do line up. So I'm going to put some pins in uh, on my lines, just trying to keep everything kind of lined up and happy so that when I surge it, it doesn't get off too much. So I'm going to pin a little more often than I would. And that's strictly because there's plaid here. This is how it's pinned together. And we're just going to go shoop, right down it. So here is one side seam before I sew the other. I'm going to open it up so you can see how the plaid's all lined up just right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sew the other one. And we will be ready to do the bottom band and, and the sleeve hem. That's it. Then we're done. Getting a late start today because I started my morning. My husband took me out for breakfast and I got food poisoning. So I was sick as a dog. Ugh, I was so sick all morning. Semi recovered, but if I look a little peakish, that's why. Definitely. And now we're in mid afternoon, have not eaten. We'll probably not eat the rest of the day because there's nothing like eating and being ill, ill to make you never want to eat again. I'm not exactly sure why either because I ate, I ate healthy and he didn't. He had no issues. I didn't even drink that much coffee, did not overeat, but definitely something was not happy in my meal. Not a happy meal. So now that I have both side seams done, I'm going to go ahead and just finish off the hem. I'm just going to surge around the bottom of the hem of the sleeve just to have that finished off. And then we will be ready to start on the bottom band. So let me hem this real quick. Or no, I'm not hemming. I'm just surging. Now you could, if you wanted to do a cover stitch, which would be super cute, um, you don't need to do this step because the, the cover stitch handles it.
still feeling a little bit, well, not great, a little weak and rumbly in the tumbly. So I'm gonna flip this around so you can see it from the right side with the little sleeveys. So this is where we are and I love it. I mean, that would really be cute as even a little bit of a crop top like this. This pattern could be quite versatile. Okay, we're going to now do our band. Now, the band should be cut on the fold with only one seam, unless you did like I did and cut it on the bias and you now have to make two seams. So I'm gonna make two little seams. Those are going to be our side seams, right sides together. So here's how my band looks right now. I'm gonna flip this around and sew these two little seams together on each side and then we're going to press it in half like we did the neck band. Pin it on and sew. I hope this is, you know, this is always the issue for me is my hip is so wide and my waist is so small in comparison um, that things like this that have a little fitted band sometimes want to roll because uh, they want to roll towards the small spot which would be my waist and away from the big spot, which would be my hip. Now that we have a circle, we're going to fold these raw edges together, our cut edges together so that it's self-lined and give it a good press. Make sure you have wrong sides together for this so you'll see pretty all the way around. That's so cute. I love a little bit of bias plaid. Okay, let's give that a quick press and we'll be ready to pin it on. I love a magnetic pin cushion. I really do. I somehow managed to lay this out just right so that it lines up and matches perfectly at the side seams. I love it when that happens. Talk about serendipity. We're gonna take our little side seam of our band, right side, and either side could be the right side. So pick the side that you like the way the design looks if you have a pattern like I do. And we're going to line that up with the side seam of our bodice. So side seam to side seam and pin it together. And then we're gonna surge around and all that's left is hemming the sleeve for me. Now, if you chose to do the one that has the little cuff before you do this, I would go ahead and put the cuff on the sleeve. Um, I just think it would make life easier, but you could do it in either order. I have pressed my seam allowances on opposite directions. So the bodice seam allowance presses to the back, but the band seam allowances are pressed to the front so that when they line on top of each other, instead of having all those seams stacked up in really thick, they kind of offset and it just makes it a little um, smoother and neater right at that side seam. Here's a quick little close up of those offset seam allowances. It's a little hard to see with my pin in the way, but these seam allowances are going one direction and the others inside the band are going the other. So when they line up on top of each other, it's flatter and smoother instead of having them all on top of each other like that. I'm still feeling wonky after having food poisoning. <laughs> there should be a little bit of ease from band to the waist of the shirt. If you look at the pattern, you can see there's a little bit of gathering. Now it's not true gathering. All we're going to do is stretch out the band ever so slightly. You wanna quarter it and by quartering, so we've got our side seams done. We're gonna lay this on top of each other. And now I'm going to find the center of my band and put a pin in it. And then we'll find the center of the shirt and put a pin in it. And then we'll lay those on top of each other. That's all quartering is. And that makes sure that we don't get this, um, like all of your easing on one side or something. If you quarter first, that really helps. And then when we go to sew this, I'll put another pin in it, but you're gonna have a little tiny bit of stretch. You're gonna stretch it ever so slightly. The band will get stretched to meet the shirt. The shirt should be just a wee bit bigger than the band. This fabric was in a haul a while back and has been in my stash ever since. I actually was thinking about doing um, the Mimi G raglan that has the, where she mixes uh, multiple fabrics and this was one of the fabrics I was thinking about using in that, but I'm 
pleased it's working for this just fine. Okay, we are ready to sew our band in and then do our hem on our sleeve. Wow, guys, this was so fast. You could sew up a couple of variations of this in a weekend and have a couple cute tops to wear to work. If you're finding that you would like this to be a little more fitted right at the seam of the band, you could put an elastic in it. Um, if you want to really have it sink in a little bit, if you want to really get more of an hourglass shape out of it, put an elastic in it. So after you sew this together, if it's not fitting quite what you liked, cut you an elastic the size of your waist or maybe just an inch or two smaller. Hint, hint. And then zigzag that into this seam. All right. That's how it looks before we sew. All right. Time to search. how this looks. Make sure I didn't have a, any slippage. There we go. Oh, that's very cute, though quite short. Eek. Super cute, though. All right, all that's left now is to hem the sleeve. I'm just going to turn up my little sleeve and stitch it in. Give it a little press, and I will meet you over at, at the uh, dress form. I'm going to try it on, though. I have a feeling it's going to be a lot shorter than I normally wear as my tops. But I could see if I had a cute little navy pencil skirt. Oh, would that not look cute with this? Yes, it would. It needs a navy pencil skirt. The pants I'm wearing are not going to be as flattering, but I'm still going to try. It matches, okay. I'm wearing a dark navy pant. The colors are okay. The style, not so much. All right, so I have my sleeve pinned up. I'm just going to stitch around my sleeve. I sewed this whole thing in white. I am not zigzagging the sleeve. I'm straight stitching it. Where's my straight stitch? Um, but if you are finding that you are having issues with pop stitches, you'd be better off doing a small zigzag than having your stitches pop. The sleeve looks wide enough that I don't think I'll have issues unless I like catch my arm in it or something getting dressed. Cute, cute, cute. Just needs a press. Now, because I did cut this on the bias, it tends to want to like roll a little bit. So pressing will take care of that. So you don't have any little um, rolls to the side. Cause you can kind of see right now before pressing. Can you see how it has the little roll? That's 100% because I cut it on the bias. Now, don't forget if you wear, if you put um, tags in, go ahead and put a tag in. The back of the neckline has a perfect spot for one. I often put them in the shoulder because I tend to be annoyed by tags in the very back. Especially in my pants because I have a scar from back surgery. And it seems like that scar does not like tags. Give this a little press and see how it looks. Whoops, I sunk my needle again. How cute. Now remember, I did lengthen this quite a bit for my torso because I am long in the torso.
Okay, I've got it on. I have lots of thoughts. Let me back up. Okay, so this is lengthened four inches in the bodice. So I am long torso. I'm just long, but um, if you're a short to torso, it'd be perfect. It wants to roll. I knew it would. I'm, because of my shape and my hip is so full, anything like this does tend to want to roll, and it does. It's actually really cute though. It's not very long at all, which I'm sure is how it's meant to be. Um, it would be really cute with a little pencil skirt or something like that, a little tennis skirt. Very cute. This is a fast sew. Very, very, very fast sew. I like it. I haven't looked to see if there's um, something currently in the books that is similar, but it's easy to sew. The directions are pretty good. You can do it on a sewing machine. You don't need, if you have a zigzag, you're good. So I would give it a try. I would love to know if you have the pattern, if you tried it. What do you think about me turning the sleeve on the bias and the little band on the bias? It is cute. It does have a longer version. I know if I do that, I'm going to have to do quite a bit of fitting to make it fuller in the hip because it's very straight from the bust. And that won't work for me because I'm not straight from the bust. I am a curvy, curvy girl. Not gonna work. But it's cute. Just the back of the collar. All right. There's my fun little vintage pattern. It definitely has vintage fit for that time period that 70s period where things were fitted and fairly straight. Give it a try if you can find it. It's out there actually. I've seen it quite a few places. So I'll see you next week for another fun video.